I don't know, but Did it function if, the if we, or? you know, well, let me know, and like I said, for y'all or whoever else, so all that fun we have here to run to you. If you could just give me their name, and I'll share, and then I'll share. So I made it in time for rest when the rest of the day. The special CRA <laughs> so it was right before eight. Tonight, right? Yeah. And then we're not going to have to worry about the alarm. <laughs> but, uh, but then I would have to call right you and set up and do that too, right? Before I said, it's going to be closed. That's yeah. the I made yeah. it. Yeah. Or do y'all have kids coming? Yes. Dude, that was a long day. Oh, I mean, I don't know if you have like one code at the fire department or if it goes off for some reason and y'all can't see it. No. I'll read them all. Okay. Yeah. Because all of these need to be read in full. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then let me know what y'all mm -hmm. need and whatever y'all need. I just can't see everyone having access. Did you? I want a taser. Well, for y'all, I could see like, you know, for somebody. I was working on my backyard yesterday. And all day today, to on my backyard. <laughs> Cleaning, everybody. So cutting like trees. Many people get out there and say, let me know. I don't know, because they, they've also given up. I know. I'm finished now, though. Not anything, but the audit purposes we could see. No, I still I have some, know. I have a damage on the roof that I'm waiting for uh, Condos to uh, take a look at it. You didn't get a chance to come here. But I just can't give it to everyone, because that's the first thing that happens when the audit is so yeah, just let me know. In theory, that meteor that hit the farm to Pam well back when that supposedly wiped out the rain cause, if that was the case, and the farm wasn't even there. Anyway, so. It's a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a you don't have to worry about the day is like, oh my mom. Oh my god. Yeah, this is we're done. My mom is the sweet and would be home. Next month, too. I don't even just south Georgia on the water would be sick. And next week, and we'd be in the day, so. Yeah. Oh, that's why. When she calls, I'm thinking, um, I'm just going to make a fair. We had no cash on Christmas Eve. Yeah. 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 Gonna be running. He might be a little late. Oh. There's Dimitri. I'm sorry. I Hi, Dimitri. There, no.
I am now called to order the special session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, September 19, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzas? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr um, notified me he'll be running a little bit behind. <coughs> we'll late. Okay. Well, good evening. Welcome to our meeting tonight, and thank you for attending. <coughs> As a reminder, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to get public input regarding the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget. Mm -hmm. Item number one is a resolution 2017-32 adopting the millage rate for tax year 2017. The city attorney will read the uh, resolution. Resolution 2017-32, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, adopting the final millage rate for tax year 2017. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 19, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. to adopt a final millage rate. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that one, the ad valorem millage rate for tax year 2017 to the City of Tarpon Springs is hereby established at 5.4200, a 6.0% increase over the rollback rate of 5.1111. Two, the city staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. It's resolution 2017-32 in full. Thank you. Mr. Henry, would you please read or review the procedures required by state law? Sure. Good evening, Ron Herring, Finance Director. Uh, but first, I just thought we just had a, just a brief presentation on what changed from your, from your budget from the first public hearing, and you should have copies in front of it. But just uh, the only thing we did was we added in the SAFER grant since was, the city was awarded the SAFER grant. So the budget before on the first public hearing was fifty six million ninety four thousand six six six. Ron, this is for uh, millage the rate. millage rate. It's for the millage rate. Yes, I just didn't know if you wanted to just go over this presentation. Number two for the budget. That's number that, two. Okay. Number one, if you just read the uh, procedures required by state law. Sure. Sorry about that. Thank you. Florida Statute two hundred point zero six five sets the procedures for the adoption of the millage rate and budget. The final millage rate must be approved before the final budget. The final millage rate is 5.42, the same as last year. The final millage rate of 5.42 is 6.04% above the rollback rate of 5.1111. The rollback rate is the rate that would provide the same dollar amount of revenues as the previous year. The increase for the rollback rate is being used to fund salary increases and operating increases. And that's what I have for the millage rate. Thank you. We are now going to the public comments on this item. With us today, we have the Vice Chair of the Budget Advisory Committee. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for your work. Do you have any comments? Marty Peters, uh, 1702, Her Marty Peters, 1702, Heritage Oaks Court, um, Vice Chair of the Budget Advisory Committee. And the Budget Advisory Committee spent a long time looking over all of the details of the budget and support the budget as presently uh, presented to you. And we urge your support and recommendation for it, as well as the millage rate. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are there any other public comments? Here, none. The chair will entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Second. Are there any commission comments on this item? Here, none. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes. Item number two <coughs> is resolution 2017 33, adopting the final budget for the fiscal year 2017 2018. City Attorney, please read the resolution. Resolution 2017 33, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, adopting the final budget for fiscal year 2017 2018. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 19, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. to adopt a final budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that one, the City of Tarpon Springs annual budget for fiscal year 2017-2018 is hereby finally adopted. Two, the City staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. It's resolution 2017-33 in full. Thank you. Mr. Herring, you want to uh, present that I 
Yes, the uh, final budget for fiscal year 2018 for the whole city is 56094666 an increase of $863,075, or 1.56% over the adopted budget for fiscal year 2017. And I can now go over this. I apologize for not <laughs> trying to do it earlier, but I can. The increase over the last time when we had the first public hearing, the budget back then was $55,717,837. The budget as it is right now is $56,094,666, an increase of $376,829. And that is the only change is we put in the four positions for the fire grant, for the safer grant, you know, which is nice. We got awarded the position for the four positions in the fire, the four firefighter to paramedic positions. The grant amount for 2018 is 280,830 with the city match of 95,999. The safer grant awarded in total is amount of $692,714 for four firefighter paramedics. Funding the funding cost in total for the four is going to be the $1,123,320. The first year we get the city will get 75% annual cost for the fire first year firefighter paramedics and the grant amount for the first year is a 280,830 city match 95,999 it'll be the same for the second year with a 75 percent funded by uh, the grant and the grant amount for the city match will be 95,999 and then going into the third year they will fund 35 percent of the annual cost for the four firefighter paramedics with a grant amount of $131,054 and a city match of $245,775. And just one last screen we put in here is just showing the, the, new, the total new positions, which is for the fire, de fire department, the four firefighter paramedic positions, planning department, one city planner, and police department, one police officer. And that's what I have for that. Thank you. And. Uh I'd like to congratulate everyone being involved with the uh, receiving the uh, SAVER grant, the uh, $692,000. We're now able to hire two additional firemen uh, for total of the next for next year. Correct. And I'm, I'm sure Chief Young would be happy about that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the commission? You're not. Any public comments on this item? <laughs> You're not. I will entertain a motion. Votes are approved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Siebert? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. Well, that concludes the special session and is adjourned at 6.38 p.m. We now go into the Community Redevelopment Agency meeting. And I'm calling to order. The Community Redevelopment Agency for the City of Tarver Springs on Tuesday, September 19, 2017 at 6.39 p.m. Roll call, please. Chair Alahuzis? Here. Vice Chair Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Thank you. Uh, item number one on the agenda is resolution 2017-03 adopted the final budget for the fiscal year 2017-2018. Mr. Hearing, would you please review the procedure as required by the state? The resolution yes, the tentative CRA budget for fiscal year 2018 is $432,657, an, inc an increase of $36,137 or 9% over the adopted budget for fiscal year 2017. The majority of the increase is due to the increase in property values. Thank you. Senior Attorney Priest, read the resolution. Resolution 2017-03, a resolution of the, city, of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, adopting the final budget for fiscal year 2017-2018. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 19, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. to adopt a final budget. <laughs> <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved by the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that Section 1, the Community Redevelopment Agency's annual budget for fiscal year 2017-2018 is hereby finally adopted. Section 2, the City staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. Resolution 2017-03, in full. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Hear none. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve resolution 
03. Second. Are there any commission comments? Here and then. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Chair Banther? Yes. Chair Lahuzis? Yes. Well, that concludes the CRA agenda, and it's adjourned at 6 39 p.m. And we now go into the regular session meeting. I'm calling to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, September 19, 2017, at 6 40 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzis? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Thank you. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Parkinson. If you please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening recognizing that many of our friends, family members, and neighbors are still very much in need due to the impact of Hurricane Irma upon their lives. And yet at the same time, we are grateful to have been spared the full impact of this storm. We pray for those in our community who are still without life's basic necessities and ask that you watch over them. We thank you for our first responders, those who give so unselfishly to the citizens of our community. And we thank you also for the many volunteers who continue to help others here in Tarpon Springs and around our state. We meet tonight to address many of the pressing needs facing Tarpon Springs and ask that you guide and direct us throughout the evening's agenda. Thank you for being faithful to us, even though at times we perhaps fall short of being totally faithful to you. Grant us wisdom and insightfulness tonight and in the days ahead. We ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag. The United, United States, States of America, America. and to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. It's good to see that everybody's here and hopefully all of you survived well. Uh, what I would like to first say is to Chief Cochin and to Chief Young and to all the first responders and our law enforcement officers for all the hard work and sleepless nights and tireless efforts they have had to go through over this last week and a half. Uh, we've all been through this. I know I've been dealing with this for two weeks between preparing and then unpreparing and continuing to prepare. But I do wanna bring forward an issue that I feel is concerning to the residents of Tarpon, at least it is to me. A while back, we had a referendum to reduce the lease for Tarpon Hospital in exchange for an emergency room. And we've had people from Helen Ellis come here many times over the past few years and have said how important it is to have our local hospital, which I think we all agree is important. Now, take a look at where Tarpon Helen Ellis Hospital is. It's on high ground. There is wetlands and golf courses and quite a bit of lowlands in the outer perimeter areas such that any flooding would not have affected the hospital. I'm assuming they have a, a generator. So it made me curious 
when my mom had an episode on Tuesday that they had to take her down to Palms of Pasadena in Gulfport on a Tuesday afternoon at 5 o'clock. That was a day and a half after the storm. I, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to anybody, but I understand their power came back Monday night because where my mom lives in Green Dolphin, the residents saw that, said they saw the lights go up. So why is it we send people to Palms of Pasadena, if you look at it on a Google map, it's surrounded by the intercoastal and a bayou, three sides. Low land, flooding area, they evacuated, which I would expect. Yet, our hospital, on high ground, with promises to be here for us in cases of emergency, wasn't. So I don't know all the details on that. I'm not going to get into stuff, but it concerns me when they come to us and ask for assistance from us, but when we're needing them in the emergencies that they say that's why they're there for, that they're not. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, that's a very that that, that that's a very um, important point that commissioner brought up just now, and the fact that the hospital is part of our emergency plan here, and it was a shock to me as well that 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 they closed. Um, I don't I don't know why I don't run hospitals, know why they can and can't stay open, but it was told to us many times. It's a cat three cat you know uh, cat 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 four building. So uh, I know I've already talked to Mark about it. He kind of feels the same way. So. I think we're going to be looking into the future as to get get, uh, get clarification as to why they close and get get better um, knowledge of, of what their process is there because it, I think it's crucial that that we maintain healthcare here, especially when um, you know I think it it it, 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 it was a surprise to us all when when they when they when they close so quickly. So there'll be uh, discussions for that um, moving forward. Thank you. Good point. Any other comments? Any other public comments on this item? Or any other comments that's not related with this meeting today? Here none, thank you. Oh, you do? Yes, please come forward. Uh, Elizabeth Posner, 1259 Windy Bay Shoal in Tarpon Springs. Uh, I was wondering when are we going to get all the branches and the debris from the storm picked up? It is uh, really a danger on our little road. Um, we've got tons of debris, and, and uh, all we need is a good wind, and it's going to be blocking our road again. So I know that Tarpon Springs gave it to FEMA. Is that correct? We're going to be discussing that, and okay. we're going to provide you the information. That's the next item on the agenda. Thank you. you and then I have one more thing. Sure. I, and I know this is probably not on the um, agenda, but our children from our neighborhood are still having to across the street uh, to wait for their school bus on a blind curve. And, the, and uh, I've gone to the county because it's a county road. I've asked for lighting because in, in the winter they get picked up at 6 o'clock in the morning and it's dark. And this is a tragedy waiting to happen. Um, I don't know where else to go at this point. Uh, they, they, they've been bouncing me back and forth and I can't even get lighting. Um, the school bus does, refuses to come into our, to cross the street and pick them up on our side of the road. And these are our young children. There, there's no reason for for no lighting on that road thank you thank you thank you uh this is an item that uh, i discussed that with the uh county commissioner uh, eggers not only to put for lights but uh paving the street as well so i want to bring it up to him again thank you could i, could I ask a question could, sure. could you repeat your address please okay Do we have any other public comments? Can I just make a quick comment to that also? Sure. Um, I sit on the 
safety transportation for public schools as well, and I'll bring that up in our next meeting um, also. So. Good. The next item on the agenda is a presentation of Hurricane Irma discussion. Mayor Alahuzas. Well, I place this item on the agenda to have a discussion and to inform the residents on the hurricane recovery efforts. First of all, I want to thank our God and St. Nicholas for protecting the people of Tarpa Springs. And I hope your families, you and your families are doing well in the aftermath of the hurricane. Hurricane Irma has been, it was a challenging time for all of us, for the residents, for the businesses, for the whole community. But uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate our city employers for doing an excellent job preparing the city for the hurricane and continue doing an exceptional job uh, with the restoration efforts. And I am very, very happy to say that we had no casualties and no injuries. Yes, we had some uh, structural damages, the trees went down, but all that can be fixed, and I'm very happy for that. Our big concern was the electricity. Duke Energy, which is not controlled by the city, it was working very hard and they continue to work hard to restore service to our community. They've been working on a priority basis. First, they do repairs for the hospitals, then for medical services such as emergency, um, ERs, dialysis centers, and then they do repairs for the water plants, the lifting stations, and then making repairs for the, to the grid so they can get the most people back in service. I know that we had many wires on the street, the trees could not be picked up because wires were on top of it and it wasn't safe for our employees to pick them up. But now I believe all that has been removed and every, all the services are being restored. Many places, of course, repairs were done temporarily. They have to go back and redo it permanently. I know it's very frustrating to be without electricity, with no air conditioning, uh, not being able to cook, not being able to sleep at night. I didn't have electricity either, even though that I grew up without electricity, without air conditioning. But uh, uh, it was temporary and it's over with. But now we are in recovery mode. Many of us are going to start making repairs to our houses. And I like to uh, remind everyone that the building department is available to get permits. Also, they streamline the process to make it easier for the people. Uh, also, staff are available to provide recommendations. And please be careful what contractors do you hire. Make sure they're legitimate contractors. And to my fellow commissioners, this storm has been a real test for us. We need to review our processes to see where we need to improve to go forward. We have some things that we need to improve on. As I discussed with Mr. Liqueurs, and we both agreed that we need a better cooperation with Duke Energy, they need to be part of our um, emergency control team. Uh, October 18th, I have a meeting with the president of Duke Energy, and that's one of the items that we're going to be discussing. Number two, after the storm, agencies such as the United, United Way, the Red Cross, Salvation Army, they should be more involved. They need to identify those citizens with the special needs, people they need to have refrigeration for their medicine, or ice that should be delivered to them. <coughs> The shelters, such as the uh, middle school, they need to have emergency generators. We need to get with Pinellas County Schools to address that. Four, it's very important that we communicate with our residents during the storm and after the storm. Of course, it's very difficult to do without, air con without uh, electricity. The uh, cable TV was also out of service. Some cell sites were not operation either. We must encourage our residents to buy a small battery radio to be able to listen to the news and to the weather report from the radio. Mr. Lecourus, if my memory serves me correct, years ago we used to have an AM radio transmitter. 
Is it still available? Yes. Uh, and the frequency is still valid? Maybe it's something that we need to start again and use that, you know, ha use the radio to provide information to our residents during the storm. Number five was the hospital it should be available. Mr. Dalakas, thank you for bringing it up. That was everybody's concern. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very proud to say that our, our foresight proved correct, that we must balance the budget without, a saving, without a using the savings in order to balance the budget. Now, savings can be used for our recovery, and I'm glad that we're doing that. I'm sure Mr. Lacordes will tell us how expensive it is, this restoration process. FEMA officials announced that residents can receive assistance from the federal government. Residents can apply online. They can go to the uh, website, disasterassistance.gov, or they can actually call on a telephone number, which is 800-621-3362. I'll repeat the number again, it's 800-621-3362. Before I turn it over to Mr. LeCourtis, again, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our employees on all levels for their outstanding job. And I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone on our commission. To the city manager, to our directors, appreciate your leadership. You guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. Special thanks to the Governor Scott for his leadership and guidance during the hurricane. He stayed in touch with us before, during, and after the hurricane through conference calls. He did a fantastic job. Also, I'd like to thank the President of Greece, the Honorable Pavlopoulos, for his support and thoughts to our city during the hurricane. He called several times to see how we're doing. I'd like to express my appreciation and thanks to Senator Bill Nelson, who offered his assistance with uh, FEMA or any issues that the city might face after the storm. He's been so helpful to us. Thank you to uh, Congressman Council Billy Rackers, to the County Commissioner Dave Eggers for their ongoing support to the city. But especially, especially I'd like to uh, thank our residents for their understanding, their cooperation. They are the greatest. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Lequeris to give us an update on the restoration effort. Mr. Lequeris? Sure. Again, we haven't even got to the point of critiquing it. Um, I know a lot of people think, okay, it's a new week, we're getting back to business. Um, but I put out to the commissioners today, we are real busy this week working. There is tons of paperwork to do. There are obviously the building department process and um, we will be through this week. Uh, we've pretty much, unless there's business that uh, has to get done, suspended a lot of business to, to get the work done and do what we need to do, obviously, with the main intent of getting as much money back as possible from FEMA um, for what is spent, which is going to be a good portion of money. Our website is up to date. It's updated sometimes three times a day. Almost any question, we encourage you. We're getting a lot of questions, but a lot of times the questions are taking away people from working. Almost anything you can think of is on the website. It's updated three times a day as far as closings, openings, and we've tried to keep that along the way. Obviously, we haven't critiqued it yet, but I think the information we got out during that time, even to the point of going around people with flyers, because we know people couldn't get communications, handing flyers to people outside to tell them of, about the anticipated um, debris removal, um, our crew at the marina walking the docks the next day to bring the information to the people at the docks, uh, crews to bring to, to the businesses downtown and in other areas. And again, just riding around the neighborhoods trying to get the word out to those who might not have power or might not be able to reach us. So again, we'll critique all that and, and there's always ways to improve, but 
that's one of the things we plan for. I think the biggest thing in the storm is, is we were planning, we were ready. We had a lot of new people, brand new chief in the, in the room with his crew. But these are people that may be new to their positions, but they're not new, new to this process. Really, I've been through a lot of rodeos with this, with emergency management. I remember 2004 when I was in the emergency management four times in a month. So I've been through a lot of these. Um, a lot of people, it's really been since 2004 since we've done this, but we never stopped from 2004. We never got complacent. This commission gave us the equipment we needed. It gave us a state-of-the-art emergency management room. Um, we prepare. Um, we trained. In fact, in a recent training with other cities, a lot of other cities kind of left out of the training early. We stayed the whole day and trained um, because we've been through it. We've been through a time we thought a direct hit was coming to us in 2004, four hours away. That was a scary feeling. And those of us who were around, including Chief Young, Chief Cochin, um, that's why we're ready, because we remember that day. And if we were going to get that, we needed to be ready for what was happening. Right now, of course, the main concern is debris recovery. That, that is the biggest effort that you're going to see on the streets. Um, there's a reason that we go out for a contract for a company. We go out to bid for a company. The company that we have is called Crowder Golf. Um, to bid for, if this ever happens, that they devote their services strictly to the city of Tarpon Springs. A lot of places in the county have consolidated and gone in with the county and, uh, you know, gone in with them to get it. It's always been Tarpon's feeling, me being around 39 years, we don't like to depend on other people controlling things. We like to be able to control things for our city. That's why we have one group that was bid that is capable of whatever disaster hits us, that they're exclusively ours. They work for us. They're not told by a county or anywhere else, you gotta go here and there. Um, we have complete control and we can, we can have them out there for our citizens. Um, we just recently renewed the bid um, in, I believe it was June for this company. It was the same company we had for the last five years, a five-year contract. We don't pay them for the five years they're sitting. It's not a contract word, they got a contingency. We don't pay them unless this comes up. Not only is this good to have, but the company that we hired also has specialists to do the FEMA paperwork. Obviously, the initial estimate says that it could be up to $1.5 million of debris removal that would be the expense of the city of Tarpon Springs. And most of it is FEMA reimbursable if you do the paperwork right. So we not only have the company who knows about debris, not only picking it up, but dealing with the I think right now the count is 200 trees that we have to bring down and cut. I know there's about another 200 trees that we have to secure branches, cut branches, and make sure they're safe. And we've got some city facilities where we need to do some clearing. So this is not just going around picking up the, tr the uh, <laughs> limbs on the side of the road. Um, you will probably see, it will probably be seven to 10 days before you see a substantial amount of the debris starting to be picked up. That's how much stuff is out there. We probably, for a city our size, have the most, we've got 14 trucks from this company dedicated to us. I don't think I've heard of anywhere else that has that many. But obviously, if you see it, it's, a, it's not a fast process. And commission, you can expect from the last time to get calls, where are we? We haven't seen them. Well, you know, there's some local areas which the streets are so bad, the smaller streets, that you would think they would do the main routes first. But a lot of the main routes, the stuff is on the side of the road, not obstruction. There are some residential streets where it's a danger and safety. So safety comes first. So you may not see them right away, but it's going to be seven to 10 days before you see some substantial difference. And we believe this crew is going to be here at least 60 days before the process is, is finished. Um, because of the volume, we've had to close the yard waste facility. That is because they need the entire yard waste facility for the amount of debris out there. Um, the citizens did have a little leeway of three days um, to bring their yard waste there, but um, the size of the operation, we just have no choice, and we have to measure, we have to weigh, and the amount of debris is going to defoot. So when you get the questions, why is the yard 
waste to close because there's no place for to bring anything else. And we need, obviously, we need to do everything right to get that up to 1.5 million reimbursed to us. Probably is going to be a nine to 12 months, but that's why you have a good reserve in your sanitation fund. That's why you got plenty enough in your reserves to cover it. Um, imagine if it would have been like the horrid pictures you see of Sebring or Naples and stuff. You know, you'd be talking about three, four, five million. But um, this reminds people of why in sanitation in in your city budget, why you have a large amount of money just sitting there, um, just to see what operations we go in. So you, the work will be, you'll be seeing the work. Um, they'll be out there picking up. Again, it may be, you know, you may not see them for a week in your neighborhood picking up things. Um, but we'll be out there. We'll get it cleared as fast as possible. Again, we've got probably per capita more trucks out there. They're working than any place at least I've seen or heard of before. So um, we'll be working hard to do it. But again, don't expect in two or three days you'll see a lot of debris up. It's just not going to happen. Didn't happen in the previous storms. You're not going to see it around the county. Um, but they're going to be working hard, and uh, that's what we're expecting right now. Yeah. So. Great. The only road, main road closed was Riverside, and thank goodness about 1 o'clock today, Riverside opened up. That was an area hit hard. Um, I can tell you, we had, some, we had some places hit hard looking like war zones, um, which is some of the reasons why some of the places didn't have the power up. It, not only did you see the lines in the street, but poles around it were snapped um, that you didn't see. So some of the people who spent three or four days, it was just impossible. Um, to get the power up. And while I haven't been the, uh, you know, biggest fan of Duke Energy, um, being out there constantly on this city, you know, on my patrols every two or three hours for the duration, um, you know, trucks from Wisconsin, trucks from Canada, those, those people were working day and night. Um, some of them, I know one crew left at 12 midnight only because by by the labor laws and by the ability that they had to sleep because they wanted to finish some people's homes, but they had to be ordered to leave because, you know, you just got to, you have to have safety with those lines and stuff. So everybody you saw out there working feverishly, and then when they didn't meet their deadline of Friday at midnight, um, when I rode the streets first thing Saturday morning, they were on the spots. And by Saturday morning, I think there was only 4% of tarpon that was left without power. So Meeting your deadline by 4% was good. And I can tell you the area, I knew the areas where there wasn't power because my house was one of them. I knew the tangled mess that they had to try to do and try to get to, um, to get to it. But, you know, so obviously I don't have any influence in the storm since I was one of the last 4% to get power up. Um, don't ask me for influence in the future to get it because obviously I don't have any. Um, but again, first thing Saturday morning, they're out there, you know, feverishly trying to get, and most of them were up Saturday. So again, while, you know, again, City Hall is working hard now on the tough part, the paperwork, all the documentation, not only for you residents who've had your home damaged, but again, so we as a city get your taxpayers' money back um, eventually for, for what was done, and that will replace the reserve that we've had to use. So. Um, again, there'll be updates on the website, um, you know, probably three times a day until we're finished. If we get some information of some specific areas we're going to be picking up in, we'll try to get that out. We hate to do it because sometimes it's changed and we tell a neighborhood we're going to be there Wednesday and then something comes up, we got to get them somewhere else. We get a lot of phone calls and screaming, you said you're going to be there Wednesday. So that's like, we'll, but we'll try to tell some general areas as they get out there, um, try to keep you informed. and. Um, and work hard to get it all restored and uh, and back to order. You want to cover about the uh, water plant and the uh, the sewer? Then they would never lost service. It was always operational. We that's that was one of the amazing things. When, when we tell later again, I I didn't have a lot of department heads here to tell the stories and stuff. It's going to have to be several weeks or so because they're out there hard working and since last Sunday morning they've been working. But um, because of the power issues. We were, we survived with the water plant. We were very close to having to exercise another great decision of this commission 
to keep the ability of Pinellas County's water come on. We warned that within 24 hours, if we didn't get power restored, we may have to bring in um, Pinellas County water. Um, we didn't eliminate that possibility when we had our own plant, but there's one case where, case where Duke knew the severity and they got us up in plenty of time for the water situation. The sewer and the lift stations, at time we had up to 50 lift stations that was out. We don't have 50 generators. Or 50. We had the, the third day of the storm after a lot of people had been out there for two straight days on double shifts. Um, we had to put them, send the group home and have an emergency crew out there for midnight to go around from midnight to 6 a.m. to pump the lift stations manually um, so we wouldn't have overflow. And again, these are people have been working two days, 16 hour days and hard. They went and rested and kept it pumped. Very minimal. We did not have a spill as a result of the outages. We had some initial, so small, it's minuscule. When we report, it's going to be minuscule. But the group that you have for water and sewer that not only kept all the water going, we kept it going without shutting the people off. Those of you who suffered those days without power in there, that was bad. But if you'd have had no power and no water because we'd had to shut it off because we were close to running out, it would double your misery because at least a cold shower is better than no shower. Um, but those crews that kept those lift stations, um, and I get the pollution reports of all the spills, and I finally had to shut it off because it kept coming up with my text of all the spills throughout this county from every city in this county, spill after spill after spill. Again, I had to turn it off because I couldn't get the emergency messages because so many spills were coming in. Hmm. And for them to work through the night, I know we had one neighborhood, Forest Ridge, that was real concerned, um, but they never, they never got close to three quarters capacity because we were always, until we get a generator there, we were pumping them before they could get there and stuff. So it wasn't even, I know a rumor went around because we started getting called a rumor, somebody with misinformation spreading that there's going to be sewer overflowing in the street throughout then. And they were never even close because we had a plan of somebody regularly going and, and pumping it down so that they didn't reach a spill. But those crews to keep that water going so we didn't have to shut it off and keep, you know, those at one time 50 um, lift stations that didn't have power um, going without having a spill, it was just <clears throat> courageous. It was, it was, again, hand pumping, though, that's not, the mo that's not well, it's one of those dirty jobs or pleasant jobs to have to do that, but they knew what they had to do, and the eight to ten people out there all night to make sure there wasn't a spill was just, um, you know, total dedication. A lot of those people never got to their house till Thursday or Friday to even survey their damage or their lawn and stuff because of what they were putting in to keep the city going. So, again, when we, when we have the... When we go over it, have everything done, have everything back to normal, we can tell you some more of those stories and stuff that went on. But, you know, you couldn't be more prouder of our worker, um, our workers out there, again, from the emergency management people who are ready to the people out there keeping water sewer and, and uh, those running uh, to have a little bit of amenities with no electricity. Thank you. Vice Mayor Panther? Yes, thank you. Want you want to comment? Yes. Um I support everything that the mayor has proposed and said. Uh, I, along with him, we got to spend two days in the EOC and witness firsthand how well prepared that this the, 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 the city was. In the beginning, when the track was not looking very good for us, it was sobering, but I felt the confidence when I was down there in the room and seeing all, all the department heads ready to go that uh, I think we are the most prepared independent city in Tampa Bay. Um, I, I, I would put our EOC in operations up, up against anybody, and I think that, that, that was especially true, Mark, when we had those conference calls in the morning and the evening with the county, not to make fun of anybody, but it, it was very evident that there were some um, agencies, if you will, that were not as prepared as we were. So I think, that's, I think, it's, I, I think it's times like, like, like this, even with what Mark said about how we have our own contractor for, for, the, for, for, the, for the debris, where you see the difference between a full service city and being reliant upon the county. To me, to me, it's 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 night and day, and 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 though, um, I think it helps you see where you where your tax dollar dollars are going, and that's why we have eight, we have eight 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 million million dollars in a reserve fund. We got hit barely by it by a category one. We're, 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 we're going to spend one, one like one 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 point five at least million dollars. Imagine if it was a two or three or a four. So that's why that's why we have those 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 funds there. 
Um, again, I want to thank all, all, all of our department heads, uh, and I know Mark's going to come back at, a, at, an, at, a, at a, an, an appropriate time for needs that we have as a city. <laughs> um, I'm sure generators put the lift stations and whatnot, and that's an appropriate use of reserve funds. That's why they're there. And um, I just I just couldn't be more 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 proud after for two days uh, watching the EOC, what the department heads were doing, how how they were responding. Um, I'm very impressed. As far as the power goes, um, you know, of, of all my family's homes and buildings, half got restored quickly, half were li li uh, later on. It, 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 it didn't make a rhyme or reason how. Um, you know, I'm still impressed, even though there's lots of room for, 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 for improvement with Duke, that we had a Category 1 hurricane, and in less than a week we have, we have, we have full, 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 full power restored. So I, I was impressed with that. I, I honestly thought it was going to be much, much, much longer. So, but I'm interested to see moving forward with the mayor's meeting with the president of Duke in October and how we can better incorporate them into our EOC. So we have some more influence over uh, special needs areas in the city that could possibly be uh, 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 the restored sooner. And uh, obviously, as has been mentioned, we have to have a conversation with the hospital because I, I consider that crucial as, 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 as part of our plan. But I, I, I just again, thank everybody. I want, I, want, I want to thank Mark. I don't, I don't think he slept much in the past two weeks. And um, I, I, I had every confidence in the world, even if the worst track happened, but thank God it didn't, that we would, we would be ready and prepared. And uh, I hope it doesn't happen again, but if it does, we'll stand ready and even better than we were this time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, we are very lucky. We fared very well in this community. And I just, I get so upset when I see postings on Facebook and people complaining about this and no power and all that, you know what, we're lucky and we're blessed that um, we, were, we were really spared. Um, but when it comes to our safety, I'll tell you, we are in good hands. Chief Young, Chief Cochin, and of course our city manager, they did an outstanding job keeping us updated throughout the entire storm, um, keeping the commission updated. Uh, it was, it was amazing. And I went, you know, I went over to the, to our emergency center and I was so impressed with how they had everything set up and, um, you know, they just jumped in. Our department heads jumped in. We had even the, some of the ladies manning the phones, the phone lines were ringing like crazy and they were manning the phones. And I thank you for that. Um, <laughs> the morning after the storm, I, of course, got, as soon as I can get the boards off my front door, I went out to, in the streets to see what was going on. And in my, in my neighborhood alone, there was already, it was what, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, there was already um, crews out there, city crews clearing the streets with trucks, clearing, clearing them so we can get out. Um, it was absolutely, I was, I was amazed. And then I went driving through, the, through Tarpon, and I was on Gulf Road, and um, there was some damage to uh, a resident's home, and I was looking at it, and here comes some city employee. Actually, it was um, Anthony, and um, he got out of his truck, and he's assessing the damage within the community. And he, you know, right away, you know, he explained to the homeowner about permits are written right on the spot if you need a permit for your roof or for any damage that's done. Um, he made a little report, and he was immediately, like I said, going around the entire community assessing damage. So. I was really impressed with that. And then I heard about the lift stations. And, these, and this crew was working tremendous hours and, and sucking out everything with that truck. I mean, that's amazing. I don't know who, who came up with that idea, but that's amazing. Probably Mark. <laughs> I have to give, I got to say, I have to give the city manager a lot of credit. He's always calm. And I look to him, you know, okay, what's going on? You know, and he's, he's um, he just, He's, uh, I don't even know how to say it, Mark, to be nice. <laughs> it's hard for me to be nice to Mark, but he, he didn't, he does, he leads the city well, and we really need to thank, thank Mark for that. Um, he does lead the city well. He's got a lot of knowledge. Being ex-chief and now city manager, he's been around a long time, so thank you for all your knowledge and everything and your many hours that I know you did sleeping on a cot. Um, appreciate that. But, again, this, this city did was did an amazing job the 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 city staff was just they went above and beyond and above board and i know they still have a lot more work ahead of them but um 
we pulled together as a city, as a family, and, and I want to thank everybody for that. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sieber? Yes, thank you. Uh, of course, I agree with my colleagues. I don't want to repeat everything. I did want to add one thing about the uh, debris pickup. Um, driving around the neighborhoods, I noticed that a lot of people have bagged their debris, and we were told no plastic will be picked up. Right. So I just wanted citizens to know that if you have all your debris bag bagged in plastic bags, that cut the plastic off or whatever uh, you need to do because they will not. So do you want to say something to that, Mark? Yes, and even though, as we always do, we have a contingency plan if they aren't because we don't want to leave them out there. So, so we want you to try to do it. I know there's some concerns. If wind goes up, it goes around. We'd like you to do it. But for those the word doesn't get out to, um, we do have a contingency plan, so there's not a bunch of bags sitting out there that we'll do. But okay. it'll save us a lot of time on that pickup and stuff if 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 you do just dump the bags out on, on the corner of the street. But, again, there's some circumstances, some lack of right-of-way. There are some reasons why you can't. And if those are the situations, then we'll take care that they're, they're picking up because there are some certain situations where there's not room for anything or not room to dump them. So we've seen some places where we've told them, just leave it there, we'll take care of it. But anybody who can do the bags and, and, and do that, then that would be best. But yeah, we do have another yeah. plan for that. I just wanted to mention that. And, of course, I want to thank everyone. I, uh, I appreciate the website constantly being kept up. I know with, uh, at the EOC Center, at the center, we... Uh, you kept us up to date, but we needed to keep our citizens and our business owners up to date, and we did that through our website and, and you know, communicating with our citizens and, and uh, business owners, and, of course, our public works department, who worked tirelessly uh, with those pump and lift stations, and uh, we had no backups, and our own water supply uh, is amazing, um, and all of the department heads that worked together, and, of course, the chief, the two chiefs here. Uh, Everybody working together as a team, we, we're the greatest. Thank you. Commissioner Carr? I want to echo a lot of the same things that the commissioners and Vice Mayor and Mayor have said. Um, thank you all to the staff um, and the city. We really, uh, really, really um, don't know everything that went on exactly, but we know that you guys did a great job. Um, one thing that was good to see, too, is that um, neighbors are being neighbors, and uh, friends are being friends, and family are being family members. So it was great to see a community come together in a time like this um, and join together and know that we potentially could be hit with a Category 3 and still stood by, by, side by side with each other. So that was really encouraging uh, for me to see. And, um, so, uh, but, Mark, I do have a question. Has the debris pickup started in the community, or does the paperwork have to be started first and finish before the debris can be picked up? Uh, the site was ready. The preparation of the site is rather extensive to prepare the site, but I understand the truck started to go out this afternoon, so they should start seeing them in the next couple of days in areas of town. Okay. But, but they've had to make an elaborate setup over at our yard waste facility, um, so a lot, of, a lot of what they were doing is finishing that setup. that They started over the weekend, but they were finishing that to prepare to bring the debris to um, with the proper measuring and yardage and stuff, so People should start seeing the trucks more frequently tomorrow and, and the next day. And I'm not sure if you know this one or not, but with the total cost to, to do all this, is it just in the contract, is it like per pound, per load, or is it just how do we determine the one point plus million dollars for this? Again, it, it's the hauling, the weight of the weight of the product. A lot of it's the weight of the product. It has to do with the weight, and yeah. that's how we come up with the, a lot the, of the it, contract. A lot of it's the, the weight and okay. the disposal and stuff. And again, almost 100% of it, if the paperwork is done right, is reimbursable. So again, that's the importance of getting the company that knows how to do the paperwork right. Okay, great. And uh, I also want to echo the frustration to see our hospital closed. I thought that was a that was very bewildering to me. Um, I was. I don't understand that. So um, if we could all just be updated on that. And I think that would be something that we could put out somewhere in a press release or something along those lines, too. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Peter Lacks, 514 Ashland Avenue. Uh, first off, as uh, many of you up here might know, but 
people out here don't know, if I stand, I can stand corrected, but I think our EOC center received an award and we've also had people come from other cities to see our emergency operation center and how it functions. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, it is. So we are on top of things. <laughs> Secondly, as far as all the debris removal, uh, I did go online and I saw the link, storm information, or I'm not sure which link it was, describing how to separate what people are putting out. Yard waste, electronics, construction material, paperwork, and things of that nature. I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen already people putting stuff on top of debris piles and some other things of that nature. So we kind of need to let people know about that. We're, we're gonna have a dance cruise going out um, ahead of this to try to get the people to do that and correct that before we know they come to the area and do that's one of the contingency plans Great. to assist them with doing it. Have a now, scout team go out in the area they're going to. to all right, thirdly, and I'm glad it was on your list about the radio station because Mark will know I've brought this up before. I think, what is it, 1610 is the frequency? Yes. You can't get it beyond maybe a half a mile. And I had asked, even when I was on a commission, to have us apply to the FCC to upgrade our transmission capabilities and also to maybe change how it's coded is how it's used. First off, off the subject, that radio station can be used for a lot more than the public safety announcements. And if you do hear it, you'll see a loop of about, there's a singy song about seat belts and all these things. So for older folks and a lot of our seniors who don't have internet or don't know how to use it or you don't have electricity and you got that little AM FM radio, we need to boost it up by what are we, 50 watts maybe at the most? We need at least 1,000 or 5,000 to be able to reach the West End and the East End. Because that, I mean, what do they say? Get a portable radio and batteries. Simple. So that would be the communication tools because when I would go to my mom's neighborhood or some other places, people were not sure, well, what do we do about this? Or, I, I would tell them, don't bag, and he says, well, I already bagged, or what, when's, when's the water, or all, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So it's a valuable resource we have, and we need to use it to the maximum amount. Lastly, as I've heard Mark and every one of you say how hard these employees have worked, what I would suggest, whatever we get back from FEMA, you dedicate 5% or 10% out of that money and take it out of the reserve if necessary, and you give those people bonuses. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? You are none? Well, thank you. Mark, please thank the employees for it, please. I will. Thank you. We are now going to the uh, consent agenda. <coughs> Item number two is the attorney fees invoice 54763. Number three is the uh, award file number 180001-N-RS Miscellaneous Services for Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. Number four is the award file 180003-N-RS Single Source Purchase of Cash Equipment. Number five is the award file 18005-C-RS, corrosion inhibitor through uh, city of uh, Sebring, uh, RFP number 16-004, and number 16 is the award file number 18004-N-RS, radio and pager Motorola equipment and maintenance. We also have a, uh, an addendum, item number one, a special event. We survive Erna, Erman, uh Weekend Businesses Promotion Event September 23 and 24, 
I'm sure we're going to pull the uh, consent agenda to discuss it. Um, any other item that you'd like to, uh, to pull? I would like to have a, uh, a motion for items two through six. Motion approved. Second. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Items. No, any commission comments? This doesn't include the uh, addendum? No. Number one, okay. Thanks. We have a motion in roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Mayor Alahusis? Thank you. And we're going to discuss the uh, consent agenda item number one, part of the addendum. Commissioner Sieber, you want to talk about this? Yes, um, as we all know that uh, our citizens suffered damage and, and um, you know, not a very a pleasant experience this past week, but our businesses did as well. And I was approached by some business owners who asked what can we do to help them. Um, many business owners were closed from three days to ten days, uh, which not only affected the business owners, but all the people that they employ. Um, they lost power, they lost inventory, um, had to... Re reopen and rebuild. Um, so I, I went to Mark and uh, Tom Function and asked what could be done. <clears throat> and we um, came up with a plan with Karen Lemons to uh, include something uh, with the wine walk next weekend where we will open up the sidewalks and, um, and suspend the, the ordinance that we have for our business owners through Sunday uh, to be able to put out uh, displays and um, have a, an atmosphere where we attract our locals to come to our businesses and and help our business owners rebuild a little bit. Um, so I want to thank Mark for um, for approving this. And if this is um, uh, passed tonight, uh, we will have a flyer go out to all of our businesses that we've um, that we're coming up with and, and advertise this and um, and make sure everybody knows about this so we can um, help our business owners. So. Um, I'm hoping this will pass, and um, I know that uh, they suffered a lot of losses as well, and uh, we want to help them out as a city. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely need to, uh, to support that. I discussed that with Ms. Lemons and uh, expressed my uh, uh, support to that, but also recommended that we promote it a little bit better than we normally do. We need to call uh, the radio TV station. We're doing a press release if this that. is approved. Um, after it's improved to do that. Yes. Um, I talked to uh, Ms. Lemons, and she was going to call the uh, Channel 9 as well, so maybe we have a special down at the docks or in, right. at the uh, downtown area. So um, any any other comments? Any commission comments? Vice Mayor? Yes, thank you. I want to thank um, uh, 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 Commissioner Sieber for uh, bringing this forward. I, I I think it's a great idea. This is for the whole city, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. The docks, yeah. too, every, everybody? Whole city. And this is time limited through Sunday, correct? Saturday and Sunday? Saturday okay. and Sunday. All right, I just want to make sure we make that clear. And we make we make it known that that, that, that they can do this. And um, in the meantime, this week, if there's any other um, rules and re um, rules and um, re re regulations that we could suspend in a temporary fashion that could help beyond this, we have our permitting and everything that bring bring that to our attention. I'm sure I'm sure it'll it'll receive full support. Um, but uh, no, I, I do want to thank. I know there was a few restaurants that got very lucky and got power back quickly, and you know I wanted a hot meal real bad, so I went to one and uh, it was like a feeding station, and those they they really busted their you know backsides to do that, and they were lucky because they got power quickly. So this hopefully will help those that were not so lucky. And uh, with all their merchandise, so I'm glad we're able to follow suit and, we'll, and, and what just makes sense and suspend some rules for the weekend to help them out. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kickley, you want to comment on this item? No. no. Commissioner Carr? Just a quick comment uh, to encourage everyone out in the audience and uh, watching online. We've got so many wonderful businesses within Tarpon Springs, very, very unique businesses as well. Um, so if you haven't been around town, up and down Ultra 19, downtown, throughout the sponge docks and other corners around town, uh, get out and check that out. I mean, we've got some really great things going on in town. So I'm glad to see this. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Sieber, for bringing this forward. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Yes, sir. Please state your name and your address for the record. 
Hi, my name is Jack Spark. I'm 2008 Golf View Drive. I also work part time for the Chamber of Commerce, and I can you hear me. Other one. Other mic. That, that's the light. <laughs> my name is Jack Spark. <laughs> I'm at 2008 Golf View Drive. I also work for the Chamber part time. And when this idea came up, I think it's a wonderful idea. I hope you'll all support it. And I think what we need to do is we need to find out, like neighbor to neighbor, to make sure that we get people out to enjoy this. It's a great idea. Good for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Any other public comment? You know, you have a motion? Oh, you I just have, wanted you to want? add something to that. Uh, to Jack, we will be, if this is approved tonight, uh, coming up with a flyer that will be distributed to all our businesses. We'll have it on our, on, on our media, um, social media, as well as uh, do a um, publicize it. So we we're, we're try to get it out there as much as possible. I appreciate you being here from the chamber, and we have uh, someone from the Merchants Association here as well. So we want to get it out there to all our business owners and our citizens. We appreciate you coming and supporting our businesses in town. And we are able to get it in the weekend, part of the paper that tells right. the activity of the weekend. Uh, they've helped us, and they're saving a spot for us. Obviously, we can't do anything after it gets approved tonight, but they've already got a spot reserved for us to do that. So. Um, they'll be they'll be ready to go for thank you. after your approval tonight. Good, good. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion. <coughs> motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner <coughs> Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Commissioner Sieber. Yes. Vice Mayor Banther. Yes. Mayor Alvarez. Yes. We are now going to the item number seven, ratify a declaration and extension of local state emergency. Mr. Likuris will present this item. Yes. 2005, I would believe, uh, and it was after again, I think those series of uh, hurricanes in 2004 where I had to scramble to get three people together to have a meeting. Um, this commission did an ordinance to give me the authority to declare a state of emergencies and for you to ratify it at next available. Um, you're not only going to ratify that decision, but th we piggybacked on the county when they did their extension last Thursday, um, which it, your state of emergencies only last seven days have to have extension. So we've done that. So we'll be in place until Thursday. I don't think the county will extend it. Um, we're fully covered for what happened. So what you're doing tonight is ratifying the decision to declare the state of emergency and to extend it. Um, from last Thursday in conjunction, both instances with the county declaring. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Are there any commission comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. Item number eight is the ordinance 2017-26 is the coastal element first reading. Ordinance 2017-26 and ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida amending the coastal planning area and conservation element of the comprehensive plan by revising the goals, objectives, and policies for consistency with chapter 163.3178 Florida statutes, providing for other modifications that may arise from review of this ordinance, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. So first reading of Ordinance 2017-26 by title only. Second reading to be held after review by state and Pinellas County. It was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on September 1, 2017. Good evening, everybody. This is the last of our um, evaluation appraisal report amendments that we have to uh, conduct. Uh, essentially, you adopted a letter that we sent last year to the state and identified this particular issue on the coastal element dealing with the Perils of Flood Act that was passed in 2015. This is us finishing up that final um, section by adding um, a group of policies and an objective to um, essentially address storm surge, sea level rise, and flooding that may occur as a result of sea level rise. This is a first step in the process. We'll be working with the county in the next few years to do a few different, a few different studies, which will then be incorporated in our comp plan, but our policy language is required now, unfortunately, because of the process, the timing that we, we fall. We fall before the county's um, uh, ear, ear is, re is re re required in 2018, so we need to get our, our regulations in place first. So this is our 
attempt to at least comply initially with the Perils of Flood Act, realizing that's going to change based on the studies that are going to be going forward in the very near future. And I can answer any particular questions that you have. Well, I want to thank you for updating our complaint. But also, I want to thank you for including the uh, sea level rise. I know a lot of people don't believe it, but it's here. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Thank you, Heather. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, sorry. I oh, I didn't comment. see her. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Trisha Bryant Rodriguez. I live at 3844 Holiday Lake Drive in Holiday. Um, I do want to thank you, everyone here, for all your hard work in Tarpon Springs. And although I live right on the other side of the county line, um, I do believe that my heart resides here in Tarpon. So I would just want to say once again, hello and good evening to everybody here. I want to thank the Board of Commissioners for my opportunity to speak regarding Ordinance 2017-26, the Coastal Element, which is a first reading. I am a student of St. Petersburg College in the Public Policy Administration Program. I work under the guidance and direction of my professor, Dr. Kronschnabel, whom I have great admiration and respect for. I want to thank Heather Erwiller for taking me to the Perils of Flood Workshop on March 31st for Pinellas County and the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. I want to thank her for answering so many of my questions since then regarding this ordinance. I'm also very happy to have met with and spoken to so many planners and city officials for all, from all over Tampa Bay during the workshop. Mr. Brady Smith, who was the main uh, speaker that day, um, he was the principal planner for Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. He did a great job explaining the statute and answering a lot of questions. I found during my research that in 2012, Florida legislature signed into law Florida Statute 163 Point three one nine one. In 2015, Governor Rick Scott signed into law the Perils of Flood Act, which amended Chapter 163.3178 of the Florida statute. Tonight, Tarpon Springs is working to adopt specific language to become more consistent with this state statute. The issue this statute and our amendment addresses is the issues relating to the rise of sea levels. In the Tom Tarpon Springs Comprehensive Plan, Goal 3.0 specifically states, protect human life and limit public expenditures in areas subject to destruction by natural disasters with the new addition of verbiage and sea level rise. There are many stakeholders in Tarpon Springs and the entire state of Florida with regards to this perils of flood statute. A large portion of Tarpon Springs is flood prone areas. Much of the area is the western side of Tarpon Springs in zones VE with elevations 14 to 18 feet and AE with 13 to 10 feet, as well as all the mandatory, mandatorily evacuated mobile homes and campgrounds. Um, the residents of the city suffer when their homes and businesses are damaged or destroyed due to flooding and natural disasters such as we've just witnessed here with Hurricane Irma. They worry about their losses, their family, friends, and neighbors, and their entire community. They also worry about rising insurance rates on their property. Our city officials have the same concerns, but these are compounded by the responsibility which comes with their positions. They must plan ahead for these events as we've seen that happen. They are also the ones to whom our community turns to for advice, help, and salvation. Their perspectives are quite different. Our first responders are also major stakeholders in this ordinance and the Florida statute. They must be the first on the scene when disaster strikes, and this is a difficult position to be in. I have the utmost respect for anyone that puts their lives on the line for the public. The coastal element changes will address many areas of concern for these stakeholders. If this language is adopted, the city will have the use of the most current incredible data regarding sea level rise for planning and infrastructure and any capital improvement expenditures in the coastal high hazard area. The changes will include high tide events, storm surge, flash floods, stormwater runoff, and the related impacts of sea level rise. This ordinance will also address the National Flood Insurance Committee community rating system flood insurance discounts. 
Tarpon Springs is currently rated at a seven, working towards becoming a six, and that gives the community an average of 15% discount on the rates. To close, I wish to make a recommendation that we adopt this ordinance because it will adopt specific language to become more consistent with the state statute. Thank you to our city officials for everything they've done, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item? Here now. Chair will contain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Are there any commissioner comments? Commissioner Skipper. I just wanted to thank you, Heather. I, you know, we definitely need to be proactive about this and uh, appreciate that, that we're, you know, finally doing this and, and, uh, and going to continue. I was wondering if we'll be getting any updates as you work with the county. Um, Certainly. You'll, you'll receive updates while we're working through both the LMS process, which is part, part of this, and then also later with the vulnerability analysis that the, city, the county will be on, on embarking on in the very near future. Okay. I think th that's really important. Thank you. Uh, thanks for bringing this forward and addressing this. Um, doesn't matter what side of the political party realm you're on. Um, it, it would be different reasons, I guess, depending on which party you're with. But the sea levels are rising in Tarpon Springs and, and Florida and the area. So I'm glad that we're addressing this with our uh, our plan here. But I know it's going to be a lot of extra costs coming in the near future. Uh, for roads and looking at roads of raising roads and doing some other things that are around our bayous and sponge shocked areas and um, looking at something that's uh, continuing to see these uh, large tides come in our road system. So um, that's something we're going to have to work on as a commission and working with the city manager and our public's, uh, a lot of the public staff um, and employees. So um, thank you again for bringing this up. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the agenda tonight. We're going to staff comments. No comments, Mayor. No comments. Mark? No, sir. Sure. I'm sure. Okay. No comments. Better. Vice Mayor Panther, you have any comments? No comments. Thank you. Commission Kicker. No comment. No comment. Commission Speaker. I just want to remind everyone again that we have a wine walk Saturday starting at four, and that um, sidewalks and uh, businesses will be open, and and hoping to see our residents uh, support them and and be all around the city to support our, our business owners. And uh, appreciate y'all coming out. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carr. No comment. Okay. Well, I have one. I'd like to uh, inform everyone that October 2nd, 2017, at 11 a.m., we have the grand opening of our Senior Information Center and TARPA Library. We finally get it, and I'm very happy with that. Everybody is invited to come. The telephone number for the center will be 727-937-1110, 1110. 727-937-1110. The uh, email ID is seniorinfo at ctsfl.us. Everyone's invited to come. I think this is going to be a great ser service to our seniors. And that concludes the regular session meeting, and it's adjourned at 7.48 p.m. Thank you and good night. <laughs>